Hey everybody, Murphy Daly here on Written by Murphy and I'm here talking about the Immigrant's Guide to American Literature again. Today I am going to talk about Washington Irving. Washington Irving who is he is considered the one who wrote the first American short story. This guy is studied a lot in American literature classes, and he wrote his short story, his famous short story, Rip Van Winkle, which is hard, hard to believe that it was even written by someone because it is so part of American culture and, I don't know, maybe other cultures too. But it was written in 1819, which is very early in the existence of America as a country. And America as a country had an inferiority complex. It's almost like they weren't a country before, they were a colony of England and other places in France and Spain and other places. And even if you don't wanna talk about being a colony of Europe, they also had, uh, America was full of people, the people that lived here before, the Native Americans but it had formed its own country. It fought a war to have its own country and it was waiting to start doing what countries do, which is be themselves and create art. So books, literature. So therefore, in terms of American literature, this is considered the first American short story. And it's a cute story. It's a cute little story about Rip Van Winkle and his other most famous story, The Legend of Sleepy Hollow, which um, both of these are basically fairy tales. Now, Washington Irving lived in 1783. He was born in America when it was America, so maybe that's part of its, his uh, claim to fame of being the first American short story writer. And he died in 1859, right before the Civil War. He was a contemporary, nearly exactly, of the Grimm brothers, those fairy tale collectors in Germany. And he wrote fairy tales. Washington Irving, these stories that he wrote, he wrote fairy tales. He did not collect fairy tales like the Grimm brothers did, but he, he wrote his own original fairy tales. And they're very clever. They are nearly indistinguishable from, well, I mean, he has his own style, but they're very much of the style of this period of time in England, the Victorian period. As I was reading it, I was like, oh, this sounds just like Dickens. And in fact, he was friends with Dickens, or they at least knew each other, and Dickens admired him. Dickens, Lord Byron, Walter Scott, who has a very different style, a very florid romantic style. Uh, I've read Ivanhoe and Washington Irving doesn't sound like this, but he does sound a lot like Dickens, that clever, um, punchy story. Uh, his stories uh, are spooky. They're like scary horror stories of what might happen in the dark. And indeed, he influenced Edgar Allan Poe. He influenced some other American writers that became famous very shortly thereafter. Hawthorne and Melville and Longfellow. But he got there first and he started writing. He wrote and he actually was a professional writer. He made his living writing. He studied um, law, but you know, he wasn't that good at it. So um, he came from a big family and figured out that he could make money writing and so he did he wrote a ton of clever little stories and they were very entertaining so he became famous and he was in the world of authors in the literary world as i've mentioned he traveled in these circles and so these are entertaining stories they're cute they're they're a lot of fun for people who like a good ghost story they're exactly right and they also don't take themselves too seriously um, 
America was very proud to have its own author. Look, we have an author. We're for real. We're a real country. Really, really, really. See? It is kind of interesting that this style of um, story is what the first author arrived at because the Brothers Grimm, in terms of studying fairy tales, were not writing their own fairy tales. They were actually studying fairy tales to find um, prehistoric history. They were actually trying to study language and study what was happening in, in times before stories were even written down. And therefore, they had a strong sense of what, um, what the people who told this story were like. Washington Irving didn't have those kinds of um, qualms. He's like, I'm going to make this up from whole cloth. This is utterly fiction. That's fine. And back to America having an inferiority complex. When he was writing stories of ghosts and um, possible dead people that used to be in these American places, he referred to the first European settlers. He did not talk about the original inhabitants of America, the Native Americans. He doesn't mention the Native Americans at all, which is kind of not fair and very myopically Eurocentric. That this story, he goes back and says, oh, Rip Van Winkle, oh, he was uh, one of those guys from the original Dutch settlers of New York. Like, oh yeah, remember New York used to be called New Amsterdam? Yeah, but it also used to be called home by the people, the Native American tribes that lived there. He swept that under the rug, that didn't happen. We're going to go way back in time and talk about the um, Dutch settlers. Oh, okay. So that was him reaching back to what he thought was Americans' roots. Sure. So that was one of the things that was common at the time is struggling to become an American country, a country of itself, and also to create history in a place that didn't have a lot of it, or didn't have a lot of what the people who were um, occupying it, well, my ancestors, the European ancestors, um, were, were making this up. So it's a bit, um, it tells something about the people that read it and the people that wrote it and how they viewed their place in the world. Let's see. Oh, definitely I talk about these being horror stories. Um, Rip Van Winkle is uh, not terribly horrific. It's sort of a time travel, but it's based on the magic of some kind of pixies that supposedly came from the Dutch ancestors. Um, the story of the legend of Sleepy Hollow and the Headless Horseman is fairly horrific. And it's about this dead, headless person that is haunting the area, perhaps. And they're, they're pretty scary. In fact, uh, there's a rather famous Disney remake of The Headless Horseman, which is from, I don't know, the 50s or the 60s. And it's scary, man. I remember seeing it as a little kid, and I'm like, ooh, it's too scary. And the story itself is, is kind of scary. It's supposed to be scary. These are definitely stories that could be told around the campfire. In the story himself, in Washington Irving's words, he mentions that. So it's horror. And I was not at all surprised to hear that he hung out with Edgar Allan Poe, who is the master of these kind of horror stories. He is so beautifully literate. So this is me talking about Washington Irving and who he is in American literature. He has this little niche. They're really good stories to tell because our good, good uh, pieces of literature to be part of an American literature class because they're short stories, they're entertaining, 
Uh, they're certainly appealing to lots of people, and they're one of the firsts. For people who haven't encountered them, they're a lot of fun. Go read a few. I find them a little repetitive if you, if you read too many for after a while, but if they're your thing, they're a lot of fun. So that's what, uh, that's Washington Irving in the early 1800s, and it's almost like uh, American Victorian style literature.